I've got a new brand here, Crazy Bird. Haven't covered them before. Now the jumper here retails for about 1,500 pounds. It's got 26 inch size tires and they are four inches wide because they're the fat wheel tire. And I do like fat wheel tires. You either love them or you hate them. I like them because they're soft, they're spongy, and they offer a lot of traction. They're good for rocky roads and things. So this hardtail setup does have a front shock that's got 60 millimeters of travel. We have hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter, a Bafang rear hub motor that's 250 watts. That can get us up to 25 kilometers per hour. So both of them are limited because of the European law. The law in Spain is 250 and you can't go over 25 kilometers per hour. And our battery, so it's a removable one. It's right here, 20 amp hours. And that should be able to get us over 100 kilometers in range, but I'll let you know more about that later on in this review. So is it a bike that is worth that price tag? Well, let's find out. The jumper's 26 by four inch wide tires are from Chow Yang, very common tire. I have tested a lot of bikes with these. So you can put in 20 PSI maximum. I'm currently running 12. That makes them a little bit spongy, more comfortable. And because it's a hard tail, I prefer to put about 12 in because if you run close to 20, the ride can be quite hard. The 180 millimeter hydraulic brakes are from a brand called Samirs, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Haven't seen them before. They work all right. I'll be doing my brake test later on in this video. Note that we do have these side reflectors. Kickstand that does support the bike's weight well. The rear motor, as I mentioned in the start of the video, the Fang is the band, and it's a good brand. I do like them. They make reliable products, and it's got plenty of power. Not very loud at all. Now, it's 250 watts, and it's running on 48 volts is what it does state on the motor itself. But according to Crazy Bird, this is running a 52 volt system. So a little bit more power is going through this motor. And it feels held back quite a lot because it's only 250 watts and this motor can really do a lot more. For our drivetrain, we have a KMC Z chain that is painted silver and Shimano's tourney. So it is bottom end at seven speed, the cassette that we do have. Pretty basic, it does the job. I haven't had any issues with the shifts, which is typical of Shimano. Welds on the frame do look very good, and the frame finish, the silver paint job that I've got with this jumper model. And note that you'll see some little markings lines here where they have talked up everything correctly. So out of the box, what they have tightened up in the factory is all talked up to spec. I went around and checked everything as I normally do, and surprised to see that they have done a very good job. A lot of brands, often don't talk things right up correctly. Some things can loosen off, but not here with this crazy bird. Included pedals are no brand ones here. They've got no markings on them, so they're not Welgo that I typically see. Made out of alloy, they do the job. I haven't really had any problems with them. My feet have not slipped off them, and we do have reflectors, which is pretty standard there. The brand of front shock we get with this model is from Trama, and the model is just simply stating fat on it, so designed for fat wheel e-bikes, of course. The shock does not have adjustable rebound. I mean, it looks like it does, but it's just a cap here. It doesn't move, you can't twist it to tighten it up, but you can lock out this front shock. Now the travel on it, they claim it's 60 millimeters. I've measured it, it's more like 50 to 55 where my grease mark is. The jumper comes with a front headlight that has four powerful LEDs within it. Now, I have seen this generic headlight used many times across many brands. And there's a good reason why. It is bright, it is powerful, does the job really well, and it has a built-in buzzer, which is very loud. The jumper does use a speed sensor, which is common for about this price range. Well, normally more expensive ones will be using a torque sensor, but speed is fine with this model. I haven't really had any issues with it. It seems to come in and give you that power on the delivery straight away, and it cuts off really quick. It's not a slow speed sensor. Some models can be like that. Now, battery is located here in the frame. It's removable. You can charge it either outside or within the bike, and it will take about eight hours to charge the large 20 amp hour battery. This battery is a generic size that I've seen other bikes use. The good news is that it is locked into place, so no one can just go along and take it. So when you need to remove it, you insert the key, you turn this, and there's a little latch here to release the battery. And because it's reasonably heavy, it drops down, and then you can remove that completely. Only the front hub with this bike has a quick release. The rear doesn't, but you do get a quick release, of course, with the seat post. 
Their seat has their own branding on it, Crazy Bird, and it doesn't feel too bad. There is a nice amount of padding on it. There's a bit of a gap here in the middle too for ventilation, and it is nice and wide, so it is a comfortable seat for this style of bike. Note that the bike does have mounting points for a rear bike rack and a front basket. Crazy Bird have selected lock grips, which is good. You see a lot of brands that just put the cheaper hand grips on that spin around. These don't, they're not going anywhere, and they have a bit of a support there for your palm. They are quite comfortable. So on the left side here, we have our pedal assist up and down. There are five levels in total. We have the power on right here. You've got a button for the headlight. We also have a headlight button right here too as well. And then to cycle through the computer, the screen there, the trip meter. So it's all quite clear, laid out here and very easy. We have our throttle on the right-hand side. So it is a twist-style throttle, the typical Shimano gear selector, which works fine nothing flash but hey it does the job and those shifts as i mentioned have been all good they've been very smooth aligned correctly this display is nice and large you can see clearly your speed my current trip meter here i've done 31.5 kilometers remaining battery life and your pedal assist level so that is one two five different levels we have the top speed with this bike being the eu version is limited to 25 kilometers per hour just like the output from that buffeting motor is only 250 watts. On to our riding test now. So what is the jumper from Crazy Bird like to ride? Well, it is a very comfortable bike with those four inch wide fat wheels, 26 inches, very smooth, very cruisy, and the Bafang motor, plenty of power. It is really quite torquey. So I can just use the throttle here if I wanted to. So twist throttle, and I can accelerate. Don't even need to pedal. And that will get me up to 25 kilometers per hour because I do have it currently limited. So our Shimano gears, typical Shimano here, very smooth, no problems with them. Now the bike, it just rolls really quite nicely with these fat wheels. Get quite a bit of road noise. The motor's not too loud. And the bike, geometry pretty good. It's uh, an upright riding position, but you do feel the weight of it especially with that front end. So trying to pop up the front, it's not super playful, but a little curb like this to go up it and down it with these four inch wheels, not a problem at all. And it's really great for just casual rides like this, just cruising along, very, very smooth. And you just feel that torque from the motor. So I'm in pedal assist level five, and that's the maximum. A lot of power there, you can feel it pull, and you can feel the limitation of the 25 kilometers per hour. It really does want to go quite a bit faster. So top speed of the bike is 25 kilometers per hour because it's limited, but on the flat, if I push really hard with my pedaling, I can get up now to 28, 29 kilometers per hour in our seventh gear, in the highest gear here. Now the climbing performance is fantastic with this bike. It's 250 watts and it's a 52 volt system. I don't really need to put any effort in it at all. I'm pedaling, but it's really nothing. I'm putting in about 10% effort, 90% the bike is doing the rest. Now this is here about a 25 to 20% gradient climb and it's easy, so easy. This bike has so much power. The Bafang motors are very good. I am really fond of them because they're powerful, but they're also quite reliable. They're making quite a name for themselves now, the thing. Now onto braking performance. So 30 kilometers per hour, more or less from this white post, full on braking. Ooh, locking up that rear, that's my own fault. But very good brakes. It makes it just past this post. It puts it, well, a little bit below average braking performance, but no, the brakes are very good. 180 hydraulic disc brakes, and it's the Samaras brand. I haven't heard of them before, but they work pretty well. I can stop safely when I need to, and those four inch wide fat tires definitely do aid the braking performance. So I rode all the way up to the top here, and I've only lost 7% battery from quite a long, steep climb, very good. Now off-road, this is where this bike does feel quite good because we've got those fat tires soaking up a lot of these little light bumps. They have plenty of grip to them. I've lowered my seat right down, which is quite low, which is great for this stuff. And even though it's just a hard tail, 
because of those four inch wide tires, they're soaking up a lot of this, and I'm only running 12 PSI in them, so they are reasonably soft. So up ahead, I have a bit of a drop. We'll see how it handles it. It's handling this really well. So here's our drop. Not a problem at all. And what about climbing performance? So my seat's still low, it's not a drop of seat post. But look at this, rockets up these climbs. Does really well. Again, because of these tires, a lot of traction, soaking up a lot. For a hardtail, climbs really well. Just so much power out of this buffeting motor. Look at this, it's climbing up this very rocky trail, quite technical, with ease. Not a problem at all. Very good climbing performance. So now our range out of this 52 volt system here with the 250 watt limited motor. Remember that because if you're going to be riding this bike unlocked, your range will not be as good as the figures that I am seeing. So normally for every battery bar that I lose, I cover over 20 kilometers. So this is so far looking like I'm going to be able to get a range of my estimate is 80 to 100 kilometers, maybe even more out of it, which is very good. Now, when you go over 25 kilometers per hour, you are on your own pedal power. And I, yes, I was doing some of that, especially on the flat or when it was downhill a little bit. So it wouldn't be touching the motor at all. The battery would not be used, of course. And that's another way to extend the range. So you'll be doing a lot of that. And because it does have the largest sized wheels, it's quite easy to be riding around about 28, 29 kilometers per hour, not even touching that motor there. So very good in terms of range. The frame is very good, the quality, the finish of it, the welds look good. What I like about it is when it came out of the factory, everything has been talked up to spec. And you can even see that when they've gone around and done their inspection, their check of it before it goes out from the production line, they've marked with a pen where they have gone and tightened up everything. And that's really good to see because I do my check, I go around these bikes when I get them and assemble them first, as anyone would do, and just go around and see if everything has been talked up correctly. And this is one of the few brands that I can confirm that everything was talked up to the correct spec and that was really good to see from them. So the braking performance, very good, not, not bad. I mean, it was around about average for the style of bike. It's very easy to lock up the rear, but we got plenty of braking performance and good to see they went with 180 millimeter discs and not the 160. The Bafang motor is the best thing about this bike. It's got so much power, so much torque, no problems at all handling very steep climbs and even climbing off-road with a little test I did. This thing just motors along. It's a lot of fun to ride. It's a very cruisy, nice, smooth ride as well, which does make it quite comfortable. And you're in a relatively upright position with the way the handlebars are. It's not like the swept back style where you are definitely right upright, but you're crunched over a tiny little bit hunched over, but not too much. So the front shock isn't really a, a known brand at all. Uh, Tama or Tama, I think it is. It's okay, it does the job. It's better than what I've seen on some other models out there. My only real criticism of this bike here is I think for the price point they sell it, it's yes, a little bit expensive, uh, but the other is I would really like to know what brand of cells they're using in that 20 amp hour removable battery here. Now normally brands will come out straight away and say that it's Samsung or LG because that's a good selling point for a bike, right? But they don't mention, there's no mention on their website that it's Samsung or LG. So I have to assume this is just using generic battery cells here, which is normally not a problem, but I would really love to see the Samsung or the LGs because they're number one, the big one, they're safer, especially if you're gonna be charging this inside your house and things like that. And the second is normally you get better range, but the range is, is looking very good. In fact, the range seems like it is using South Korean battery cells, but I just need to confirm that it's not on there at all. So that's why I'm assuming that it probably isn't. That is really it. Otherwise, Crazy Birds Jumper here is a very nice bike to ride around on. Really quite comfortable for someone that's not super serious. Now, I wouldn't recommend this for downhill or anything like that. This is more just cruising around town with plenty of climbing power and you want this style of bike. The other bad thing about a bike like this, and it's straightforward, pretty much common sense, you know this, that it is going to be heavy. Yes, it is quite a heavy bike. It's uh, over 30 kilos, this bike. So it's a bit of a monster to move about. You certainly don't want to have to lift this up a flight of stairs. So thank you so much for watching my review of the Crazy Bird Jumper.